Good morning. Good morning. Those of you who are here, and remember to change your clocks to spring ahead, and those of you who are at home who are just beginning to wake up or are watching and joining us and participating from online, we are glad that you are here with us wherever, at home, in the sanctuary, in your cars, this second Sunday of Lent. On Wednesday, please remember that we will be having our second uh, Lenten study, Another Day Older. If you didn't come last week, that's okay. You can come this week and join in the conversation. That's at 6.30. If you want to go to church summer camp, the registration is open, and there are all kinds of camps for all kinds of ages. So I hope that you will do that and uh, check them out. If you have questions, let me know. There are grandparent and grandkid camps. There are music camps. There are sports camps. There are all kinds. So please check that out. Also, watch for an activity from the Faith Formation team. They, will, they are planning a Palm Sunday Faith Formation activity. Watch for more information on that. If you haven't checked out our website recently, please go to that. There is a ton of information about what is going on in the life and ministry of our church and in the world. Um, it's uh, www.vermilioncongregational.org, and you can find all kinds of information. Also, from the mission committee, March is, is the month for one great hour of sharing. In your bulletins, you see that there are some um, handouts. Those are about one great hour of sharing, and they provide resources to people all over the world, as well as our, in our own backyard. The Missions Committee is, is designating $333 towards the drive, and they would like to ask you to consider giving to that as well. They'd like to give $500 or match it, if at all possible. So any amount is appreciated. There are envelopes in the gathering space. You can go online to do that as well. And also the reminder from the mission committee is love reaching out is returning on May 15th and there'll be more information coming. So there's lots going on in the life of the congregation, the ministry that grows in this community. Will you join me as we center ourselves, opening our ears and our hearts to hear God. Like Jesus in the garden, let me be in this quiet place. Let me see a path for me. Let me trust in your grace. In this quiet place. In this quiet place. 
If you're able and willing, will you stand and join me in our call to worship? Come home, home to the embrace of God. We are walking the Lenten path from past errors to future possibilities. We are walking from broken walls to mender of broken walls. We are walking from unlivable streets to a restorer of livable streets. Come home, savor the graciousness of God. Hear the love of God, feel God's tender grace. We are walking towards wholeness as we are mended and restored. We are on the path of joy and our hearts are filled with thanks and praise. Come home this day, dwell with Christ and God's amazing grace. Today's scripture reading is from Genesis chapter 15, verses 1 through 12, and verses 17 and 18 from the message. After all these things, this word of God came to Abram in a vision. Don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Your reward will be grand. Abram said, God, Master, what use are your gifts as long as I'm childless and Eliezer of Damascus is going to inherit everything. 
See, you've given me no children, and now a mere house servant is going to get it all. Then God's message came. Don't worry, he won't be your heir. A son from your body will be your heir. Then he took him outside and said, look at the sky, count the stars. Can you do it? Count your descendants. You're going to have a big family, Abram. And he believed, believed God. God declared him set right with God. God continued, I'm the same God who brought you up from Ur of the Chaldees and gave you this land to own. Abram said, Master God, how am I to know this, that it will all be mine? God said, bring me a heifer, a goat, and a ram, each three years old, and a dove and a young pigeon. He brought all these animals to him, split them down the middle, and laid the halves opposite each other. But he didn't split the birds. Vultures swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram scared them off. As the sun went down, a deep sleep overcame Abram, and then a sense of dread, dark, and heavy. When the sun was down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch moved between the split carcasses. That's when God made a covenant with Abram. I'm giving this land to your children from the Nile River in Egypt to the river Euphrates in Assyria, the country of the Kenites, Kenizzites, Kadamonites, Hittites, Perizzites, Rephraim, Amorites, Canaanites, Girgashites, and Jebusites. So it's time for the children. If you're going to come up, nope, okay, that's fine. You don't have to, that's good. So will you join me at home as well as we gather around? I want to talk about naming. So naming. What's your name? How did you get your name? God has a name. I forgot my book. Here it is. God's name is I am who I am. And I'll talk about that in the, script, in the sermon a little bit. It's from Exodus. God's name is I am. There's this book that if you didn't pay attention, if you didn't look at the faith formation um, constant contact this week, you're going to want to. This book is read by a rabbi about God's name, how we come up with names for God, and it, how we describe God. God's name, like I said, is I am who I am, which also is Yahweh in the Hebrew. Yahweh is breathing in God and breathing out God. Those of you here and those of you at home, if you try that with me, Yahweh, feel God move in. Yahweh, Yahweh. So as you're breathing, you're breathing God. Yah. God's name, all of our names, it's important to be called by name. God calls us by name always. And the best name is child of God. Think about that, about Yahweh, about in God's name, what names you use for God to describe God and what your name is, and how that all is together. I'm glad that you could join me. I don't like this springing ahead either, losing that hour of sleep. So it's wonderful that we can gather, not just in the building, but online as well, as we worship this Yahweh, our God of unconditional love. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your love and for our names and that we are your children. In your son's name we pray. Amen.
From what a wonderful world played in the middle of Ukraine. To the scripture from Luke, the 13th chapter, hear these words. Reading to you from the message. <clears throat> At that time, some Pharisees approached Jesus and said, Go. Get away from here, because Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, Go tell that fox, Look, I'm throwing out de demons and healing people today and tomorrow, and on the third day, I will complete my work. However, it's necessary for me to travel today, tomorrow, and the next day, because it's impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who kill the prophets and stone those who were sent to you. How often I have wanted to gather your people just as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you didn't want that. Look, your house is abandoned. I tell you, you won't see me until the time comes when you say, blessings on the one who comes in the Lord's name. Thanks be to God that we have these words for us to learn from. Amen. Will you pray with me? O oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. A very strange story for us this morning from Luke. But let's see if we can make some sense of it. Many of you know this, but some of you don't, that I'm an identical twin. So growing up as an identical twin meant many a time I was called by the wrong name. It didn't help that we had rhyming names, Melinda and Lucinda, Mindy and Cindy. Sometimes people would even call us Smindy because they just couldn't tell which one of us was which. Growing up, we looked alike. In fact, even now, when we go back and look at pictures, there's times we have to say, okay, is that me or is that her? But being called by the wrong name always got my dan dander up. Not outwardly, but inwardly. Outwardly, I was polite. I answered or corrected politely. But it really caused me to want to have and make my own name in the world to be as different as I could from my sister. I wanted to be called by my name, not my sister's. Must run in the family, because my mom was always called by the wrong name. Well, most of the time, even the wrong generation. She many times was called by my greatest, my great aunt, the youngest in their family, Aunt Grace. Now, there's a lot of children in their family. There were 12 in my grandmother's family. And so my mom and my Uncle John grew up 
surrounded by all of these aunts and uncles, my grandma's siblings. Aunt Grace was only about eight years older than mom, and so by the time whoever was calling and going off on all those 12 names or they got down to Grace, the next one was Sue. So she got lumped in at times with the generation above her. Names, they are important. God's name, as I said at the time on the steps with the children, is from Exodus 3, 13 to 15. It's I am who I am. Listen to Exodus. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall, the, God also said to Moses, The Lord, the God of our ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. I am who I am. That book that I showed in God's name takes the names that we call God, the names for God that amplify the character and the nature of God who we believe God to be. When we call on God, we are displaying our need and our understanding of our God. Really, if you haven't checked out the faith formation constant contact, there's something for everyone, all ages, on this. And you can hear <clears throat> Rabbi Rav Sherry read In God's Name by Sandy Sasso. How God's name can be different for where we are in time. How God's name, I am who I am, is different for each one of us at different periods in our lives and in time. Because the names that we call God are descriptive of God. Name. They're a form of address. Names identify. Names reflect relationship. Charlotte Charlotte and DJ will call me Oma. My children called my mother Mima. The names, it's a name. They reflect the relationship that we have. Names can be used as an honor to uplift, to acknowledge that we see the fullness of that person. But names can also be used to diminish and demean. Do you remember that rhyme, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? But I'm here to say that words do hurt. Name calling does hurt. Name calling leaves those holes and puts up walls that divide us. They they don't mend the walls and help to restore the streets like the images that we we have been seeing and what we have been working on. The last line of the text, blessing on the one who comes in the Lord's name, in Yahweh. And I am who I am. This story is really difficult for us to grasp. It's Jesus is moving closer to Jerusalem. Jesus is journeying closer to the cross. And so he says, go tell the fox. Well, he's called Herod a fox. Go tell the fox, Herod, that I know what I'm doing. 
I'm throwing out demons. I know that. I'm healing people. I know that. I'm doing what God. I'm doing what Yahweh. I'm doing what I am who I am has brought me here to do. And he goes on and he says, I, I'm standing up to tyranny, to oppression, to bullying and power. Because those things are not filled with God's love. He goes on and he keeps saying, I, <clears throat> I'm on my journey that will take me to my death. I know that. And I am not afraid of this bully, this fox. That's our story today. Jesus knows who he is and what he has been called to do in the world and to share Yahweh. He also knows how to use names. He calls Herod the fox. He knows that names speak to the character and to the nature of the person. So he is saying something when he calls Herod a fox. He knows that Herod is dangerous and predatory. And he knows that Herod can't be trusted. Jesus is unafraid. He knows who Herod is, and he is unafraid. He confronts Herod, and from that vantage point can move on. Herod doesn't hold power over Jesus. That's what this whole story is helping us understand. Jesus knows who he is. He knows he's going to Jerusalem. He knows he's going to die, and he continues to be God's son to stand up to oppression, to tyranny, to bullying, to power that isn't shared with God's love. He says, Herod doesn't hold any power over me. Yeah, he's a bully, and he doesn't hold any power over me. So on this second Sunday of Lent, from the Gospel of Luke, we hear Jesus speaking in, these abys uh, in tones of abysmal disappointment and utter heartbreak. And his utter heartbreak and his abysmal disappointment is at the refusal of his own people to hear and to heed the summons of God, to draw nearer to God, to gather, to come home. That's the hens and the chicks part. He knows that the world then and now is obsessed with power. In our jobs, in our church, in our community, and in our lives at times. A colleague where you work slyly takes credit for someone else's idea. Not very big, but it's about power. People jockey for position to influence decisions in the church and in the community. Like what color the carpet should be or what color are the walls to be painted. My dad tells the story of at his first congregation after the tornado had torn apart the church and they were rebuilding, the biggest argument was about what color the carpet was going to be. Now it really wasn't about that. It was about power. But we're no different in the church. So we jockey for positions to influence those decisions. Maybe it's you really don't want that pastor, or maybe you really, other people think we really need it. It's the carpet. It's not the carpet. It's not the, it's the power. Think about today, about whether we wear masks or not. It was a huge discussion, and a lot of power was being influenced in that decision. For Jesus, God's passionate dream, compassionate desire, and bold determination is to gather God's human children closer and closer to God in God's embrace and love. This is the mi mission and commitment that is at the center of Jesus' work. And he continues it. It's like that mother hen, God, Yahweh, 
seeks to draw, to embrace, to welcome all of God's children, not just some, all, into the human family that God has intended. So the thing is, being named and claimed is a big deal. Being called the right name is a big deal. Using the right pronoun is a big deal. Maybe what we need to do is open our minds to figure out who God is. God isn't male. God isn't female. God is I am who I am. So maybe we need to use the pronouns for God of they and them. Something to think about. Because we are about being menders of broken walls, about being restorer of livable streets. And it can be as simple as calling the right name, using the right pronoun, standing up to tyranny like Jesus. And Jesus, Jesus isn't a stranger to the political paths of his day. Think about the first will be last and the last will be first. It's a political statement. The Pharisees felt threatened. And the reason they felt threatened is because Jesus knows that they're in cahoots with Herod. It's not something that's new. But there is one true living God, and that is Yahweh. And he, Jesus, is telling us that foxes aren't in control as much as they think they are. Herod thought he was going to bully Jesus, and it didn't work. So yes, Jesus' words and actions challenged people of the day, and challenge us. Jesus redeems, saves, delivers, confronts the systems of oppression. Jesus opens doors wide. And we are called to do the same. Thanks be to God that Yahweh is in our every breath. As we move into a time of prayer, there are many places that are hurting in this world that need our prayer. There are many people that are grieving or ill. Let us open ourselves to hear God, to show God, and to live God. Let us be a time of silence as there will be time for you to say a name or place in the chat or in out loud but God hears us let us pray Violence will end and war will cease.
God, help us to be menders of broken walls and restorer of livable streets, that your love will be stronger, that your hope will live in us, and that we will come together to be your children in this time and place, loving unconditionally as you do. And so we join together in the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gifts, the gifts that you share, your offerings, your tithes, your giving of love and hope through your treasure, through your time, and through your talent. We are grateful for that. You may share the offering in the plate in the back. You may send it through snail mail into the church office, or you may go to our website where there's a donate button, and there are many places for the general fund, for Ukraine, for Sarah, for one great hour of sharing. Pick them. Share with us the gifts, the treasures that we have. We are grateful. So let us receive those tithes, those offerings this day. God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Christ, all creatures here below. Praise Holy Spirit, comfort her. One God triune, whom we adore. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much for your generosity, for the gifts that you share, for your treasure, for your time, for your talent, for your unconditional love for one another. We are blessed. Thanks be to God. Amen. Oh God, my Father. 
naming. What is your name? What names do you call others? Be a mender of broken walls and a restorer of livable streets in this world, in this place, at this time. God's unconditional love is with us. Yahweh, I am who I am, is holding us. So as we continue in this season of Lent, may the Christ light shine. May we live and breathe God's hope and love and grace. And as we do that, may we go out into this world being the mender of broken walls, the create, the restorer of livable streets. In the name of God, our creator, redeemer, sustainer, and the God of I am who I am. Let us go in hope and faith and love. Amen. Thank you.